Tony the Shark here, and I'm with OJP, which is Operation Jesus Pictures, and I want to greet you in Jesus' name. We're making this tape especially for the people of Rwanda, because we love you, we've been praying for you, God bless you, God bless you. We pray for you every day, and I want to greet Brother John and his wife, Bethy, and their family, and the people who are in their church and the neighbors who live around them, and the friends they have among you in Rwanda, and the different pastors and their wives. Greetings to all of you in Jesus' name. God bless you, my brothers, my sisters. We love you. So I want to talk to you today about some things that the Holy Spirit has spoken to us over the last few years about Rwanda and things the Father has said as we've been praying for Rwanda. So, after I talk to you for a while, I'm going to ask Jordan to come out, and Jordan Cooper and his mom, Teresa, and I want to pray for you. And if you're sick, if you need to be healed, if you need Jesus to help you, we're going to ask Jesus together with you for him to help you. And Jesus loves you. We know that he will hear us. We know that he will help you. So we'll do that after we've after I've talked to you for a little while. So God bless you. Greetings to you in Jesus' name. I love you. I love you in Jesus. We all love you here. Here in America, we at OJP, we at Operation Jesus Pictures, pray for you without ceasing. May God bless you deeply and richly and your family also. Some of the things I want to talk about are serious. And I'm sorry about the wounds that can be caused as we're talking about serious things. I'm sorry about the pain of the wounds that are in you from things that have happened in the past. But Jesus sees, and Jesus knows, and he loves you. And I only mention these matters to help to come to healing from Jesus. Um, when we first started to give pictures to Rwanda, it was in 2006, around Easter. And before Easter, the Father spoke to us and asked us to get pictures into Rwanda, that you were on his heart. So we started to pray for you. And then some of you may know the story of how Brother Kenneth Ezra from Uganda wrote to us. And so we wrote to him and we asked him, do you know anyone that will go to Rwanda and take pictures of Jesus for us? And Kenneth Ezra wrote back to us and he said, I will do it myself. And so we sent him pictures of Jesus and he took them there to um, Pastor Francis, and they showed the passion of the Christ at the church, and they invited many people to come. And that's when we first started to give pictures of Jesus to Rwanda. The Father showed us a serious thing during that time, and our friend and our sister in Jesus here at Operation Jesus Pictures, her name is Silvana Lupetti. And she's a prophet of the Father. And before we sent the pictures of Jesus to Rwanda, the Father showed Silvana a place in the heavens. And she saw a gathering of many people. And she said that this place is a place that only the murdered can go. Among all those who have ascended into heaven, who have left this earth before us. Only those who are murdered can go in this place. The Father called it the place of the murder. And Jesus goes there because Jesus was murdered. Jesus was beaten severely and he was whipped. If you've seen the Passion of the Christ, and I hope you have, you saw a picture, a film, about what they did to Jesus, but it only shows a portion of it. Satan was present, and he always 
loves to bring harm and grief and suffering. And so Jesus was suffering. He was beaten. And then, in a cruel manner of death, he was crucified. So Jesus was murdered. Jesus, unlike most people who are murdered, Jesus was willing to be murdered. He let it happen to him. He let it happen to him because of you, because of me, because of the sinners in Rwanda, the sinners in America, the sinners across the whole world. All of us are sinners. He let it, he let this terrible death come to himself because he wanted us to be restored to the Father. And he saw that our sins separated us. So the father allowed his own son to be killed. And Jesus allowed himself to be murdered. And now Jesus walks among those who are in this place of the murder. And I saw it too. The Holy Spirit showed me to it. Showed me this also as I was praying about what Silvana had seen. And Silvana said, this gathering of the murdered, we're looking towards the earth for what's happening now and for what lies ahead. And she saw among those gathering of people who had been murdered, she saw people from Rwanda who were murdered there in your nation not that long ago. Even 1994 is not that long ago. And she said that these Rwandans were standing by Jesus. And they and Jesus were looking towards the earth. And they were looking towards Rwanda. And she said that the Rwandans were saying, We are happy because we are healed. Jesus loves us. And we understand what happened. What happened was wrong. It was a great wrong. And our suffering was great. And your suffering is great. But they said, now we are healed. Jesus has healed us. And we are happy. And we want you to know, you who remain behind in Rwanda, we want you to know we are healed. You, we want you to know we're okay, and you will be too. You will come where we are to heaven. Not necessarily to the place of the murdered, but to heaven, to be with Jesus. And we want you to know that. We love you, and we look forward to you coming. So this was a very serious message that the Father sent to Silvana, and that he showed her as a prophet and that she saw and she talked about it she talked about what it was like to see people who had been murdered and what it was like to see them happy and she spoke of Satan because Satan has been a murderer from the beginning that's what Jesus said about Satan Satan was present when Jesus was murdered. Satan was present in Rwanda when so many of your friends and your family were murdered. He was there inciting the people because he's wicked. He is an enemy to Rwanda. Satan is an enemy to America. He is an enemy to every human on earth because he is an enemy to the Father. As Jesus loves, Satan hates. As Jesus loves and heals, so even those who were murdered can say, we're okay, we're okay. Satan brings about harm. So, First, the Father showed this gathering of murder and showed the healing. 
that is mom man. And then the father said that he wanted Rwanda to know about those who were hurt. Wants them to know they're happy. And the father spoke of the tragedy in 1994. And the father said, I saw what happened. I was there. I grieved. First, I let the nations answer and rescue you. And they did not. And when they did not, then I moved to rescue you. But I saw your pain. And I heard your cries. And I do love you. And now the Father is moving to respond to Rwanda to show you how much he loves you. He, he does this by sending the pictures of Jesus. Father wants you to have the opportunity to look in Jesus' face and to see how much he cares for you. And to know he suffered as you suffer. He loves you. If you ask him to help you, he will. If you talk to him, he will talk to you. Remember in the Bible, as recounted in the Bible, how God spoke to Abraham and to Moses and to Job and to Paul and to Peter and to Samson and to so many God has spoken to mankind since he created the world God even speaks to murderers Cain killed his brother Abel because he was jealous when the father praised Abel as recounted in Genesis in the Bible and before Cain killed Abel the father came and warned him. He said, sin is at your door. It wants to take you, but you must stand against it. And Cain didn't listen. He didn't do it. He gave way to his anger and his hatred. And then after Cain killed Abel, the father spoke to him again. And when Cain said, the punishment for this is greater than I can bear, the father had mercy on him. And he helped him. He said, no, I'll put a mark on you. So whoever kills you, I will respond to that. So the father is no respecter of persons. There isn't a human being on earth that isn't created by the father. He is God. He is the only God. He is our God. He's your creator. He's my creator. It was his choice to create us what we look like. It makes no difference that I have white skin and yours is dark. It makes no difference. I am his daughter. You are his daughter. You are his son. You are my brother. You are my sister. This is true. No one can change it. No one is better than another. The Father created all with love because he is love. The liar, Satan, this is one of the lies that he has brought out. He is a liar. He is despicable. And he says that people are different. And he makes some people feel better and other people are better than this. And they're not. He's lying. That isn't true. But he used this lie to cause unhappiness. Now, with Cain, he should not have killed Abel. He should have told the father, it makes me angry that you are picking Abel over me. And the father would have said, change your sacrifice. Blood is required to pay the penalty for sin. And Abel brought me a blood sacrifice. And when sin comes into the world, Sin leads to death, and that is why blood is required, a, a life is required, as Cain is offering as a sacrifice, like I told him, don't offer me vegetables, offer me life, offer an animal, that's what I said to do. And if he told, he would have told Cain that, but Cain just got angry, and the enemy came, 
and came after me as anger. But it was all a lie. Father wasn't favoring Abel. He just was honoring Abel because Abel did what the Father said to do. He was right. If you do right, God will praise you. If you don't do right, God won't. Why should he? He's the creator of right. He's the creator of love. He knows for us that we should love, and he knows how we should love. In the Bible, it tells us what to do. It tells us how to love one another. Jesus said, I command you, I order you to love one another. That's how important it is to the Father. But the enemy is deceitful, and he came with lies clear back then, 6,000 years ago, to cause harm and to cause death just as he moved with his lies to cause harm and to cause death in Rwanda. And the father saw, and the father cares, and he loves you, and he wants you to know this was not his way, it was not his choice, he didn't want it to happen, he didn't want the enemy to move among you, he didn't want you to give room for the enemy to move. He didn't want you to believe you were less than someone. He doesn't want you to believe you're better than someone. You're the same. You're loved by him. You are his daughter. You are his son. What is higher than that? Jesus said, in the scriptures it says, Jesus said, I'm not ashamed to call them brethren. I'm not ashamed to call them my brothers and sisters. That's pretty amazing. When the Son of God wants to be our brother. So the Father wants to you to know this truth. And he wants you to know that he saw what happened. And he grieved. And he cared. And now he's moving to rescue you. And to heal you. He will heal in your spirit. He will heal in your body. And we will pray for you when I'm finished speaking, and we know Jesus will heal you. We know it. Come up and touch the picture of Jesus when we're praying for you. Just let him come, and he will heal you. This is to show you that he loves you. These signs are proof that he's really speaking through us to tell you he loves you, he wants to help you. So, that was the first thing the Father showed us, was about the gathering of the murder and how they are now, how they're healed, and how they're happy. And we, we read about Rwanda as much as we can and what happened there. And we, we watched movies like Hotel Rwanda and others, and we prayed for you and we loved you. And we sent the pictures to you. And the Father then, then, then it, in Christmas 2006, we sent uh, a few small gifts to our friend Brother Sean and to the people in his church just as a greeting and a way to say, God bless you, we love you, our brothers and sisters in Jesus. And so at that time, the Father gave a message to Rwanda. And I'll speak a little bit about what he said then in the message. He said, he said to you to talk to Jesus and to listen to him. Listen to what he says to you. He spoke to Abraham. God talks to people. I, I just explained how he spoke to Cain, though Cain was a murderer. He will speak to you. No matter who you are, you are his child. He knows you, he loves you, he will speak to you, to you, to each and every one of you, and he wants you to know this, this is true. Talk to him and listen, and wait on him, and think about him, and look at his son's picture, look at Jesus, talk to Jesus, and listen, and he will talk to you. You can commune with God, you can get to know him, he can be known, Abraham knew him, the Bible says that Abraham was his friend. This is why we were created. We were created to be his friends. We weren't created for sin. 
We weren't created to be separated from Him. We were created to know Him. He planned us with love. He made the earth for us. You live in a beautiful place on earth. Beautiful. Brother Sean has sent pictures to us of Rwanda, and it's beautiful. Very beautiful. We would love to come visit. We, we asked Jesus to bring us to come visit you. I especially would like to come and visit you and to see my friends there that I've been praying for and to come. But that's up to Jesus. He'll decide. But your place is beautiful. Father made this beautiful world for us, with us in mind. When he first created Adam and Eve, he put them in a garden, a beautiful garden. Rwanda is like a beautiful garden. This shows the Father's love. His love for us is steady and without end. One time the prophet Silvana said that his love is like a boundless, endless river that never ran, never ends. It comes flowing from him to us and never stops. And we don't deserve it because of what we've done. But his heart is forgiving if we will stop what is not loving and turn towards him, help one another, love one another, forgive one another. If we do this, it makes it easy for him to draw near to us and to show us, yes, I love you, and to speak to us and to help us. This is what he wants with you. He wants you to talk to him, and he wants to talk to you. He speaks every language, knows your language, knows ours. Every person on earth almost has their own language because everyone, they speak the language that their parents spoke. And they speak the language they, that they hear spoken around them. They also have their own phrases or their own way they say things. The Father knows every one of us. He knows the language of each person among us and loves us just like you know every one of your children and you know which child laughs at certain things or which child makes a certain phrase so the father knows and understands us and loves us loves us cares just like you look on that child tenderly he looks on us he looks on you this is true this is not a sermon this is not what I'm saying. This is what the Holy Spirit is saying. This is what the Father is saying. And you can believe it. It's true. Ask Him. Ask the Father. Go out and be under a tree somewhere. Talk to the Father and see. He will talk to you. He will respond. He wants you to know Him because He loves you. So this is part of the message to Rwanda that the Father gave that he loves you and to talk to him he'll talk to you he sees your grief he sees your wounds and he wants to heal you he wants to heal your whole nation and he wants to turn you away so never again does such a tragedy occur but one loves the other and each realizes there's no difference among us we're all God's creation and in eternity in a thousand years, will you remember what nation you were, what tribe you were? What about 10,000 years? A hundred thousand? A million years? A billion years? How long will it be until you decide, well, all of us are the same? The angels don't worry about, well, I was created to serve God over in Afghanistan, and I was created to serve God in Mexico, and I serve God in Canada, and another angel says, well, I serve God in the USA. They don't feel that they're different. Each of them loves the Father and serves Him with joy, no matter where He sends them. And the same is true for us. We're all His creation. We're all His servants. We're all His friends, whom He loves. So, let there be no differences among us. In Jesus' name, let Jesus, who, who paid the sacrifice, let what he did for us be the deciding vote that causes us to say, let there be peace between us and friendship 
and long. So then, in this message from the Father, the prophet Silvana saw something else from the Father. And she saw the angel Michael, who is a mighty warrior. And she saw Michael and some of his angels. And Michael led the way like a spearhead, like a V. And Michael was at the very beginning of it. And they were coming towards the earth. And they were coming towards Rwanda. And so Michael came first because he's a warrior angel and he came first to come against Satan's demons that are present, to cause darkness, and who lie, and who are, they're invisible, so it makes it hard to realize they're there. But often you'll feel the darkness when they're around. But Michael came to break through their ranks, and she saw an angel right behind him, and the angel was carrying a sign. And the sign was around his neck, and it was a golden cable was holding it. And she said that the faces of the angels with Michael were serious. She said their faces reminded her of the face on Lady, on Lady Liberty, which is the Statue of Liberty in America. Very serious, very serious face. These angels look serious because they were going to bring this message from the Father. And so she looked at the sign that was around this angel's neck, and, and she said that the sign was written in heaven's language. And so she didn't know what it said, and so she looked at the Father to see what does that mean? What does the sign say? What does it mean? And the Father showed her something about the language. He said that the language that was heaven's language is a language of love. She said that in he heaven there are no words of hatred. There are none. The angels don't speak like that. And the Father doesn't speak like that. It's only loving. That language is understood by all the angels. And the demons who are angels that fell. They used to be in heaven, but they fell. This is what the Bible shows us. We know that it's true. They used to speak this language, but now they have so many words of hatred, just like Satan does. But still, they could read the sign that was in heaven's language. And so, we all know this language. We all know the language of love. Because the Father spoke it into our spirit when he created us. And our mind has forgotten it. When you're born as a child, you don't remember what happened in the womb. Your mind does not. But our spirit does. We know what it is to be loved. And we know what it is to love. And it may be very deep. So we don't remember with what we think. But it's in our spirit. We understand this language. This language that the Father would speak to us. I love you. And other loving things he would say. So she looked at the sign. And the sign said, Speak not one word. And it was a warning to Satan. And the angel Michael came into the midst of Rwanda to leave this sign, to put this sign there, this message, to say, speak not one word. And the father saw, he saw during the genocide, he saw during those terrible days, what terrible things were said. People were called terrible names, lying names. It's not true. On the radio, horrible words were spoken. And Satan spoke through the radio. Somebody would have done a service to you if they blew up the radio and shut its voice because Satan was speaking to you with terrible words, inciting some to hatred and inciting others to wounds and a fear. And so the Father says to Satan, 
speak not one word. And the father will back it up. And something happened in 2007. And our, our brother, Pastor John, he takes the pictures of Jesus and he gives them out to people who want to have them. And so we send them to him and we so much appreciate his fellowship and his service to Jesus with us. He is the head of Operation Jesus Pictures in Rwanda, just as we are the head of Operation Jesus Pictures in the United States. So, some people spoke against John, and they said that he gave out the pictures without permission, which wasn't true, but that's what they said. And what happened was, Jean had to go before the authorities. He told them what happened. He said, I didn't give it to anyone without permission. I only gave it to people who wanted it. And it, so, uh, some people, if he gave somebody 30 pictures of Jesus because they wanted more, and then they went home and they shared the pictures, they thought that it was Jean giving all those pictures around, but really he just gave it to one person. But they said things that weren't true about him. And instead of Jean suffering for it, they did. And this is like a picture of what the father is saying to Satan. He warned Satan, speak not one word. If Satan is going to try and stir up trouble in Rwanda again, then Satan is going to suffer for it. Because the Father is not going to allow that to happen again. And He wants your help with this as you love one another. And I'll talk a minute, in a minute, about what the Father showed about helping Him. But that was the warning that she saw. And what happened later with Sean is like an example of that. I want to read to you and talk to you about something called Where Life Begins. And this is something that Silvana wrote, that the prophet Silvana Lupetti saw. You know, the father calls her his prophet in the United States. And that's right. She speaks about what she sees in America, and she speaks about what she sees in the world because it's the Father who shows her, and it's the Father who's our Father. So we're glad to hear what she said. And, and this is what Where Life Again says. It says that there is a difference, a big difference, between what we think in our mind and what we know in our spirit. What we know in our mind and what we know in our thoughts, and what we know from our own experiences, this is not the totality of who we are. This is only the portion of us that's in the natural realm, in our mind, in our bodies. We are not defined by time, she said. We are defined by eternity. Who we are is not determined by, well, I'm 50 years old. Well, I'm 30 years old. Well, I'm 22 years old. Well, this happened to me in my 40 years. We are not defined by time, but by eternity. We are eternal beings. Like I said, in one million years, we'll still be alive and rejoicing. We will be with those who have gone before us into the heavenly realms, into paradise, into heaven, who are with Jesus. Our lives are eternal. Our spirits are eternal. And this is what's true about us. The harvest is not the end of the process. It's only a step towards what's happening. Our spirit can hear things that our mind can't. The mind has boundaries, but the spirit has no boundaries. Deep within us is something pure that wants the truth, that seeks the truth, that wants love, that seeks God. That's what's within each person. 
Our spirit is the center of who we are, inside a body that will die, but it, it itself will never die. We were made, we were created, we didn't create ourselves, we didn't come into being because of something we did, we came into being because God created us with love. We were created by a being of love. We were created by a person that created the individuality. As there's many of you, and each one is individual. Each one is different. Each one has its own personality. That's what God made. That's what our Creator made. He's a person that can be seen by our spirit, who can be heard by our spirit, and He is the source. He is the beginning of our spirit. He's a person that wants to give life in abundance. He wants to give joy to you. He wants to give life to you. He wants to give happiness to you. He wants to give help to you because He loves you. This person is God. That's who he is. That's what he's like. As we give birth to our children, he gave birth to us. And this beautiful being created us. He wanted us to look up and see the stars. He wanted us to look around and see the mountains. He wanted us to rejoice in the rain and the smell after the rain and the beauty of the green and the beauty of the animals created us with love. He wanted us to know him. He wanted us to reach out our hands and take his hand and talk to him and love him and know him. And coming to know him, coming to hear him and know him, that is where life begins. Life doesn't just begin when you're born from the womb, from your mother. It really begins when you come to the Father to the one who created you. That's where life begins. This is where your life begins now and in all eternity. It begins with you and Jesus. It be begins with you and the Father. It begins with you and your friends and your family as you look around with love because you are love. That's where life begins. That's what the Father wants you to know. This is love. This is love. The Father is love. And love is what we were created for. To think anything different is a lie. To think that we're any different than each other is a lie. To think that the Father doesn't love you is a lie. He loves you. loves your children. He loves your mother loves your sister. Our eternity is love, a defined by love and with the one who is love. You don't have to be in America to talk to God and hear from Him. You don't have to be in Rwanda to talk to God and hear from Him. You don't have to be in France. Anywhere on earth, if you speak to the Father, He will speak to you. He will. You can get to know Him. He promises. He will help you. Now, He wants you to help Him. He will help you. He promises. Ask Him for help and look and see. He will. Ask Him for help in your circumstances. Ask Him for help in healing in your spirit. And ask Him for help in healing in your bodies. And He will. He will heal you. In Jesus' name, He'll heal you. For Jesus' sake, He will heal you. The Bible says that by his stripes, Jesus' stripes were healed. How did Jesus get those stripes? He got them when he was whipped on the back. And so when the Father looks at you and you're sick, and you ask him to heal you in Jesus' name, he looks at Jesus and he sees the wound on Jesus' body for you, and he'll say, yes, I will heal you. And he will draw near and he will hear, heal you and he will help you because he loves you. And he wants you to help him. And here is how you can help one another in Rwanda. And this is God's will for you. I tell you this in Jesus' name. I tell you this by the Holy Spirit. He wants you to help one another 
Help one another as he will help you. As the enemy moves through you with hatred and divisions, respond to the Father and move back with love, with forgiveness, with help. Help one another. You know, the Father said, for instance, help your children. Put an end to AIDS. Men, stop sleeping with other women besides your wives. Stop bringing AIDS on your children. Don't make orphans out of your children anymore. That is not love. Now, I don't know who told you that it was okay for men to sleep with other women, but it isn't. Jesus says no. The Father said no. I never intended that. If you think that, you're wrong. Now, if you tell yourself that that's what you want to think, because that's what you want to do, you are wrong. Love one another. He wants you to love your children. Don't make orphans out of your children. Now Jordan is going to come out here in a little bit and he and I and Teresa are going to pray for healing. And the Father will heal you whether you have AIDS, whether you have cancer, whether you have headaches, backaches, sore legs, whatever is your problem, the Father is going to heal many people who ask him. We know he will because Jesus' sacrifice was great. His stripes are many and they were painful and he suffered them for you. So Jesus will heal. The Father will heal you in Jesus' name. But he wants you to stop. And this message is to all of Rwanda. Love your children. Don't make them orphans. Love your wives. Don't make them widows. Don't give them AIDS. Don't get AIDS yourself. Stop. In Jesus' name. Love one another. Help your children. Help with the schooling. Now, we know that there's a situation in Kigali where some children can't afford to go to school, and so they are on the streets in the day, and they just they don't have anything to do because they can't go to school. They can't afford to go to school. We're going to help some of them. We're going to start in 2008 and help some. You help. See what you can do. If you have something to donate, to help, if you have food you can give for these children, give it. If you have a chicken you can bring, bring that. If you have money that you can give, if you have books that you can give, pencils, help the children. As God loves you and is helping you, help others. He will bless in Rwanda and He will move and the Holy Spirit will do mighty things. Don't you want to join Him? I do. I do. I absolutely do. First, Rwanda. Help Rwanda. Help each other. He loves you. So this is how the Father asks for help, especially for the children. As Jesus loves you, love them. And love is the opposite of self. Love is the opposite of sin. Love is about others and not about us. So in Jesus' name, help one another. Does your neighbor need her door fixed? Do you know a widow that could use some help with her car? Or with her getting some place, or filling out some papers, or her children are hungry that night, or maybe her child needs more clothes, or do you have a friend or a neighbor who took in children, but now she doesn't have enough food to feed them? Help one another in Jesus' name, and he will help you. God bless you. God bless you as you help people. God bless you as you help one another. Anytime, we would be happy to hear from you. And if you talk to Jean, he will tell us what you say. He can write to us and ask us to pray for you. 
if you have more than you want to pray for other than what we pray about today God bless you our brothers and sisters in Jesus name we love you we love Rwanda God bless you in Jesus name Hi I'm Jordan Cooper and I'm happy to be able to pray for you today and I'm going to ask Jesus to heal AIDS and stop AIDS from spreading all over the world. Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, we have with us a picture of Rwanda that Pastor Jean, our friend, sent to us. So we are going to lay hands on the picture and we are going to lay hands on the picture of Jesus and we are going to put our hands up and when we do as we're praying for you put your hand on our hand and we'll pray for you and first we're going to pray for people who have AIDS Jesus Jesus in Jesus name we come to you in Jesus name we heal everyone with AIDS Yes, Jesus, put your hand up and say stop as AIDS spreads, as it has spread so many places in Africa. Put a stop in Rwanda and reverse it, Jesus. And let those who are repentant, who have AIDS, who are sorrowful, who are repentant, Father, who come to you in Jesus' name, heal them. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, we reach out to those in Rwanda who need to be healed from AIDS. And we ask you, Father, to remove it from their body, to restore their immune system, to heal their bodies in the name of Jesus. In no other name could we ask this, Jesus. In no other name, in no other name but that of God himself, in that of Jesus, because of what he suffered, how he was murdered, the stripes on his body. In his name we ask you, Father, in Jesus' name. We ask you to push back the enemy from these people with their lives that he's brought. We ask you to forgive the sin of those who have not been faithful to their wives have sinned against you, Father, by not loving one another the way you asked us, you told us to do. Forgive them, Father, and heal their bodies in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus. Let this spread throughout Rwanda. Let there be healings. Wherever Shaw goes with the pictures, wherever your picture is spread, Jesus, let there be healings. Let there be life. Let there be wellness. Let the sick get well. Let the weak get strong. Let the elderly regain strength. And give them help, Jesus. Give them what they need, food and provision for their bodies. Bring jobs to Rwanda. Bring blessings to Rwanda in Jesus' name. Bring good things for them that they can enjoy life on this earth that you created, and that they can love one another and help each other, and then pray for the rest of the world. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Bring back the dead, Father, in Jesus' name. Those who fall wounded, those who are hurt, those who have cancer, Father, bring healing in Jesus' name. Give a spirit of sharing among them, so they share with one another. They feel generous, just as you are generous. Yes, Jesus. Give food to all. And 
not let any be starving. Give clothes to those who need it. Give food to those who need it. Please, God. Let there be schooling for those who need schooling. And among all, let there be love. And let the people feel in their spirit love. And as you heal their bodies, Father, let it be a sign to them that you love them, that what they've heard from us today is true. And they can know you, and they are loved by you. In Jesus' name. Yes, Jesus. You are a great God, and a loving and a wonderful God. And you are a God who loves the nations. And you are a God whose treasure, Rwanda, and we thank you for that. And we ask you to reverse all the wounds, to heal all the wounds from what happened then, the terrible tragedy that was that happened. Bless them now. Let there be blessings. In Jesus' name. This is our kitty, Bilbo. And when he hears us praying, sometimes he will come and join us. So, a blessing to you in Jesus' name from Bilbo the cat. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for pets. Thank you for loving animals, animals that are friends to mankind. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Bless the children in Rwanda. Bless them and let them feel in their spirit how they're loved. And bless the parents. Let them love one another and love the children. In Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless you in the name of Jesus. God bless your family in the name of Jesus. God bless your jobs in the name of Jesus. God bless your food in the name of Jesus. May your crops do well. May they grow bountifully. May you have many crops so you may have enough and more to share with others. May God bless what you said your hand. May God bless anything you do out of love for others. Yes, Jesus. And let this spread along the spirit of the Rwanda people from their creator, their God, who loves them in Jesus' name. Jesus. Thank you for meeting with us today. We enjoyed talking to you. It's my good friend Jordan. He's been praying for Rwanda for a long time, as has his mother has Silvana, our friend Nikki, Antonio, Douglas, Anthony, Felicia, Emily, Lydia. These are the friends of Rwanda and the USA. Dana, Robert, Catherine, Mary, Jim. So many of us praying for you with love. God bless you. God bless you, my sisters, my brothers. My friends, God bless you.